Yo guys, Rumblin' Man coming to you today, and in this video, we are reviewing the Dingwall NG3 bass guitar. We're gonna have a great time, so make sure you stick with me. So guys, welcome to the Rumbling Man channel today. If it's your first time here, I wanna say welcome. This is a guitar and bass channel where we take a look at basses, uh, guitars, and related gear. And if you've been here before, maybe you're a subscriber or a patron or an insider, uh, welcome back, and I'm so glad you're here. If you're not yet subscribed to the Rumbling Man channel, I just wanna invite you right now to go on and click the subscribe button, as I would love to have you as one of my regular subscribers because we do a lot of videos like this one now today i live in coastal florida and today is kind of a uh, rainstormy kind of day so if you hear that in the background i do apologize but i'm going to speak out into this condenser mic as best i can okay uh, we're looking at a very very cool base today um, it's a base that i've never had the chance to review until now and very blessed to check it out and that is this lovely dingwa base we're going to go over some of its key features we're going to hear it some more so make sure you stick with me um, this is such an incredible instrument. On my channel, we review basses of all price points. You know, I, I mean, I've reviewed like a $75 bass guitar, and sometimes we get up to $2,600 and $3,000 and $4,000 basses uh, when we can, and this is one of those days. The particular Dingwall that I have right here, this particular NG3, uh, is actually in a very limited special edition finish, and that is this matte swirl pink. It's really cool, really stands out on stage or under camera lighting, uh, really has a nice look to it. it, has a great feel to it. I love, I love the matte feel it has to it, and it even has a matching headstock. So obviously it's a great bass to look at, and it's a great sounding bass. Um, one thing I really want to accomplish in this video today is I want to explain to you the controls because at first the controls and the pickups can be a little overwhelming, okay? So we're going to explain that, but first let's hear another demo. I know that there are a lot of metal and hard rock players out there who like Dingwall basses, uh, so I'm going to do kind of more of a rock uh, kind of demo right now. I'm going to play with a pick, I'm going to turn on some overdrive and some amp simulation with flat EQs, and we're going to listen to this bass on active mode and listen to some of the sounds it can give you in a rock mix. Check it out. Let's talk about the neck real quick. I mean, how about it for those fan frets? What a sleek look. 
feels so great to play. Um, it's funny because I've always had a tendency to be kind of a traditionalist when it comes to basses, and I've always had like, you know, P and J basses and then occasionally jumped outside of the box. But really, you know, if you're stuck in one type of bass guitar, you really should try more things because I've been super blessed to try this Dingwa bass out for recording. I mean, you can get around on this neck so fast. I love the uh, satin urethane finish that it has on the back of the neck. You can just glide along smoothly. It has a very high quality feeling to it. Very classy neck. This neck is actually a five piece maple neck uh, and the profile is a medium thin C neck profile. And the neck just so happens to be enforced with a heavy duty truss rod. Uh, really good quality materials that they put into this base. All the hardware looks great. We got open gear hip shot tuners on this thing. And check out those saddles down there, man. I just think this thing is so cool. Let's talk about the electronics real quick and I'm just gonna explain to you what each thing is and how it works and we're gonna hear how it sounds too. So we actually have three pickups here. Uh, these are Dingwall's FC 3N pickups. Uh, and obviously there are a lot of knobs and controls. Uh, this is an active bass that has a three band active EQ by Dark Glass. You heard me right, it comes stock with a Dark Glass EQ. How cool is that? I love the way Dark Glass stuff sounds. Not long ago I reviewed the uh, B7K Ultra preamp. Doesn't sound much different than this at all. So you can check out that review, but I mean, you've kind of got the same activity going on right here on board. Now one thing you may notice is a toggle switch right here. This is a two-way toggle switch and what this toggle switch does is it channels the bass to go from active mode to passive mode. Okay, so when engaged up like that, the bass is in active mode uh, and you have the aid of the dark glass preamp, the three band uh, EQ it has on board to tailor your sound, can really get some power, some thunderous tone. And then when it's flipped down, it is in passive mode. And you know what's so funny is how often do you, you know, have an active passive bass where you really just use the active mode, the passive mode doesn't sound as great. This bass sounds incredible in passive mode. I mean, I'm really impressed with the tones we get and I'm gonna show you those in just a second. So let's talk about these five knobs right here and what they each do. Now mind you, uh, these knobs on this particular bass are aftermarket knobs. Uh, the knobs that'll come on yours look a little different, but knobs are just one of those things you can change out really easy. Uh, so that's what we have here. So essentially right here we have a master volume knob. So obviously it's gonna go from zero to 10 and everywhere in between very nicely. Okay, and so next we have a four-way rotary pickup selector knob, and that's what you're gonna use to channel the different pickups. So when this knob is all the way counterclockwise, you are listening to the bridge pickup in the bass, okay? Now, when you start turning it clockwise, we start going upward a little bit. So we turn it clockwise once, and you're no longer just listening to the bridge pickup. At that point, you are listening to the middle and bridge pickups in parallel. And it kind of gives you a sound that's very similar to that of the well-known uh, Music Man basses with their bridge humbuckers, okay? So then we turn it again another notch clockwise, and what we have then is the neck and bridge pickups in series. And that's the sound that's going to be very similar to the effect of a jazz bass. And then with, you know, active and passive mode, you can make it sound kind of like an active jazz or a passive jazz. It sounds really cool, and I love that sound. And then if you go all the way clockwise to the fourth setting here, uh, we're gonna be listening to just the neck pickup. And then that's going to give you more of kind of a P bass sound, kind of that single pickup, you know, thuddy sound uh, that we all know and love really well. So let's talk about these three knobs right here. These three knobs uh, going toward the bridge are your three band active EQ. So in passive mode, they don't do much of anything. In active mode, it's a three band EQ, but what's interesting is usually with three band EQs on bass, we have the straight up bass, mid, and treble controls. Well, this is actually a little different. Uh, powered by the dark glass preamp on board, uh, what we have in this three band EQ is we do have a bass boost and cut knob, and obviously there's a notch filter in the middle to know when we're flat. And then up here, instead of just a mids knob, we have a low mids knob. Same thing, boost and cut, 
with a notch filter in the middle. And then up here, instead of a treble knob, we actually have a high mids knob that you can get some really cool, really crazy sounds with as well, you know, boost and cut with the notch filter in the middle to know when you're flat. So with this three band EQ on board, you can really tailor your sound a lot of different ways. It's a super versatile instrument. And while today's bass is a four string model, you can also get it in a five string or even a six string. Okay, so very cool. What I wanna do real quick is I wanna let you listen to the pickup so you can just hear the different sounds they make. Okay, so we're gonna have the bass in passive mode. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the bridge and I'm just gonna work through the different uh, the four different positions on this rotary selector switch. So real quick, I wanna give you a listen to how these pickups sound, the different sounds you can get with the pickups in passive mode, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna turn this bass on passive mode, and we're gonna listen to all the different pickup positions. Using this rotary selector knob, we're gonna start with the bridge position, then we're gonna make our way up to the bridge and middle position, then we're gonna make our way up to the bridge and neck position, and then listen to the neck position. And in passive mode on this bass, I just want you to hear the different range of sounds you can get from these three really nice pickups. So super, super cool. I am just amazed by the sounds you can get out of this bass. It is super aesthetically pleasing in every way. Um, this jack is a really revolutionary design that's not gonna mess up on you. I mean, what can I say about this bass? Um, it even runs on not one, but two nine volt batteries for the active preamp. And a very cool thing that my friend Ed showed me is this battery compartment, no screwdriver needed. It is actually magnetic. Check that out clips right back on. I mean, just everything about this bass rocks. So if you're thinking about getting one, if you're thinking about taking the plunge of one of these, it is definitely a bass that I recommend, okay? I wanna thank you guys so much for checking out my review today. Um, if you've played Dingwall basses or wanna chat bass, feel free to drop me a line in the comments of this video. I'd love to chat gear with you. Obviously, what musician doesn't love to chat gear, right? <laughs> Um, I want to say a special thanks to my uh, all my subscribers and to my patrons. Uh, one such patron and insider is my friend Ed. Uh, this is Ed's bass, and he was very, very kind after just getting it. He was super kind to loan it to me for today's review out of his collection. So thank you, Ed. You are a good man. Uh, so a lot of fun. If you're not yet subscribed to the Rumble Man channel, I invite you to subscribe. Uh, we're going to have way more bass videos, some guitar videos as well for the guitar player in you. Okay, the dark side, as my friend Alan would call it. Uh, also, if you got value out of this content today, if you enjoyed the demos, if you liked the video, go on and give me the thumbs up button so that YouTube will be much more likely to recommend 
my video in searches, which will help me get views, which will help me quite a bit, okay? If you wanna get involved even deeper in the channel, I do have a Patreon program uh, where you can become a Rumbling Man insider and have access to some special content. Uh, so you're welcome to do that. The link's in the description of this video. Uh, that said, I don't pressure anybody to do that. The choice is yours. Uh, also in the description of this video, I have linked to where you can pick up this bass for yourself on Reverb, where you can pick up the other gear I use in this video uh, and things like that. So make sure you check those out. All right. Thank you so much for watching today and for being a part of this channel. God bless you guys. And I will see you on the next video. All right. Peace.